Welcome to a new main lesson. In this one we are going to learn about probability density functions that we use to describe random variables. During the Monte Carlo simulation of the neutron transport we are going to assign values to a large number of random variables such as the number of fission neutrons or the distance between neutron collisions and we cannot do this without having a description of the random variables. And the probability density functions can provide such a description to continuous random variables. A description of discrete random variables is much easier. We simply assign a probability to each possible value. We can denote each possible value by xi and the associated probability we can denote by p. Now it must hold that if you sum up probability for each possible value it must equal 1 exactly. Let's have a look at an example of a discrete random variable, for instance the reaction type x is the reaction type. It's going to be practical to denote each reaction type by an integer number, so uh, let's just choose 1 for uh, the efficient reaction. Let's choose the number 2 for uh, capture. And let's choose number 3 for scattering. These numbers are our values and now we can assign a probability for each possible value. So let's assign probability 50% to the efficient reaction, let's assign the probability 25% to the capture and 25% to the scattering. So these are the probabilities. We can also display this information in a plot form. Let's have probabilities on the vertical axis and the reaction types on the horizontal axis. So we have a reaction type number one, fission, two for capture, three for scattering. And then probability 50% is assigned to fission, 25% is assigned to capture and 25% is assigned to scattering. In case of continuous random variables, there are infinitely many values. Therefore, we cannot tabulate these values, we cannot assign a specific probability to every single value. Instead, we choose to describe continuous random variables by the so-called probability density function that we denote by the letter f. And this function gives us the relative likelihood for the random variable to take on any specific value. The word relative is important here because there are infinitely many values. The actual probability that a specific value is selected is close to zero. It's, it is infinitesimally small number. However, when you evaluate the probability density function for a specific value, you will not get a value close to zero. You may get a relatively small value close to one. That's because this number is relative. It's compared to all the other values. Let's see how the probability density function may look like for one of the continuous random variable, the distance between two collisions. This function may look 
like this. It's an exponentially decreasing function. So we have the distance and this is the probability density function. The probability that the collision occurs decreases exponentially with the distance. Now when you integrate the probability density function over all possible distances from uh, distance 0 to infinitely large distance we must get the probability 1. We can also integrate the probability density function over some uh, specific interval let's say from distance s1 to distance s2 so the integral would equal the area below the probability density function curve and in this, in this case the probability uh, would equal the chance that the distance would be selected from within the interval s1 and s2 So that would be all for now and uh, I will see you in the next mini lesson.